<laughs> Great stuff. OK, so I'm going to share share some information about um, a task and finish group that we set up. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to look at some of the approaches that we use to capture learning. Um, how we worked across the wider system, so the ICS as well as our local organisation, um, how effective the two approaches that we used were. I'm going to move so you can see my face now. Um, and then our plans to share the learning, because I think that's something that we, we haven't actually got to yet. So if you could take me to the next slide, Alison. That'd be great. Okay. Um, so this was the aim of the task and finish group. So I pulled this from um, our final report, which was to respond um, so basically the response to COVID-19 meant that we did make lots of changes as lots of organisations did. Um, and they wanted to identify the key learning to feed into planning for the second wave, which we're now in, um, and also to transform the organisational culture for the longer term. Um, so I'll, I'll touch on whether that was, whether we've actually achieved that at the end, <laughs> if, if that's okay. So if you could move on, Alison. Um, so the task and finish group was wide ranging. It was led by the director of the continuous improvement team um, and also had representation from uh, the director of governance, direct, deputy director for workforce and organisational development from within our organisation, um, also the head of business intelligence and myself as knowledge and library services manager. Um, in addition, we um, had membership from uh, the ICS, ICP, CCG and Aqua um, and the Director of Continuous Improvement was linking in with UCLan because UCLan, um, our local university, have actually been doing some other work to look at um, capturing learning but in a different way using a different methodology but we were really keen that everything that was happening within our region was connected in some way or at least shared across the region so that we could either adopt similar approaches and be cited on what each other was doing. Uh, so if you want to move on, Alison. So this was our learning framework. Um, so stage one was to capture the learning, and stage two to thematically analyse what we'd, the information that we captured. Um, stage three and stage four, which are looking at areas to, to develop and how we scale up and roll out any technological innovations and um, haven't actually happened yet. So we've completed stage one and stage two, but stage three and stage four will be things for the future. Okay, you can take me to the next slide. So we used, um, I think Holly, you shared the tool that we used in a learning blog on the Knowledge for Healthcare blog, um, which we found was identified by one of the um, continuous improvement teams through um, I think it's the Q community uh, and this was shared as a as a useful tool to to capture learning to capture organizational uh, I've put the link on the slide here um, but like I say it's on the blog and I can share that in the um, chat later on if you like um, so we used a, an information capture tool to interview 50 teams across the organization it wasn't just we didn't just interview teams who were directly involved in delivering care um, we interview teams across um, all of the different divisions. So I was involved in interviewing people from the corporate division. So IT, where there was a lot of learning, um, some of the business teams. I also did some interviews with uh, three education teams, some of the continuous improvement teams. Um, so we, it was quite a wide scope in terms of being interviewed. Um, and we also um, spoke to people from estates um, and those kind of areas as well. So it wasn't just about um, oh, frontline care. Kitchen. Although, we, sorry, can I hear somebody? Oh, hi, <laughs> sorry about that, thank you. Um, so yeah, so we so we interviewed teams across the whole organisation from, from different areas. Uh, if you could take me to the next slide, Alison, I'll just speak a little bit about the tool itself. Um, so there were two parts to the tool. The first part of the tool actually looked at um, core changes from an individual team and system level. Um, so you asked a series of questions and then basically asked people to comment from an individual perspective, a team perspective and a system perspective. So, for example, some of the things that came through might have been around homeworking um, and, and there may have been benefits from an individual level, um, system level, they may have been looking at the challenges of communicating across the wider system, for example. Um, 
the second aspect looked at some of the wider context, so how we were collaborating with other um, parts of the system, so whether it be outside our organisation um, or with members of the public, um, and there were some quite interesting insights that came through on that aspect. Um, Behaviours that people um, were demonstrating during COVID, so how people reacted to um, the changing situation. We saw quite a lot of um, different reactions um, and what leadership was like at all levels um, across the organisation as well. So not just senior leadership, but how um, people at all levels were adopting leadership roles and, and that kind of came through in, in the interviews. So if we could take it to the next slide, Alison, thanks. Uh, so these were some of the key themes that came through. So first of all, um, a lot of the interviews alluded to the fact that people just basically um, jumped in to help out wherever they could. We had lots of redeployment across the organisation and there was lots of positives around uh, staff response um, and the way we worked as a wider team, I think. Um, communication came through quite as um, there were lots of benefits to the way that we communicated, but obviously lots of challenges as well. So I think some of the key things with the communication um, that were that I saw across some of the interviews that I did were um, that the senior leadership team, so the chief exec was very visible and had regular communications and that's still ongoing now. I mean, it has scaled back a little bit, but we were receiving daily communications from the chief exec. Um, and I know that our um, director of nursing had some uh, has been running regular uh, briefing sessions uh, via Teams with like 200 staff on a weekly basis to kind of stay in touch. And I think that level of communication was very much appreciated across the organisation. Um, there was lots of, so, so a lot of people talked about the fact that we could um, reduce bureaucracy because it was very much around um, having to do things um, at a fast pace in a short amount of time. Um, we were able to introduce new processes, so virtual clinics really quickly, whereas they've been talking about things for years and not really been able to get around to doing them because the need was here and we had no other choice. Things were happened very quickly and lots of red tape was, was avoided that we, we usually would have had to have alluded to. Um, and emergency preparedness and continuity, continuity planning was another of the key themes. Uh, Alison, if you want to move on. Quite like having somebody doing my slides for me. I might um, request this every time I do a presentation. Oh, you've gone forward too far. <laughs> so the main outputs from the interview so far have been, um, we've, we've written a report, a detailed report, um, and presented that to the exec management team. Um, we haven't actually done anything else with that information as yet, so it hasn't been shared across the organisation. Um, if you could move to the next slide, Alison. Great. So the ne next stage of the process was to conduct a pre-mortem, and I wasn't really involved in this, so whilst I was quite involved in the interviews and the report writing, and the presentation to the exec team. I haven't really been involved in the pre-mortem because I was on leave, um, but I'll tell you a little bit about it because I think it's quite an interesting approach. Uh, it was led by Aqua and our head of business intelligence. And basically um, the pre-mortem tool, I think Chris Cookson did mention, Chris Collinson mentioned it at the, um, Oh, it's very Prime Minister's press conference. Next slide, please. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I sound a bit like Boris. Uh, yeah, so the pre-mortem is very much around looking at um, basically what could go wrong. So we brought to, the idea was to bring people acro from across the system um, to think about what would be the worst case scenario. So we have COVID and everything goes wrong. Um, and it's based on this idea that um, the patient has died and asks what did go wrong. Um, and it's basically generating as many reasons that the project failed as, as possible. So, so that's what the pre-mortem is. Um, they invited people from across the system, as I said, so a senior, team, senior exec team from our organisation, uh, members of the ICS, and I think quite a lot of uh, GPs 
also attended the event. Um, it, it was um, a half day, so three hours in an afternoon. And I don't think it went according to plan because I think that they aimed to fit too much into that time and also didn't um, really, I think more people came than they were expecting. So, so they did a really good uh, piece of work around identifying the plausible reasons for the for the failure. So the, in this instance, it would be we, we have COVID. What what would be the worst case scenario? What could go wrong? So they generated lots of options. Um, but what they didn't get around to being able to do was the next stage, which was to identify um, what the actions would be, what what how then that we might then feed that into our planning. Which um, so the, there's a piece of work happening now to kind of look at the information that was captured in, at the event on the day and see how we can move that forward. Uh, so yeah, next slide, please, Alison. Uh, so the next steps for our project. Well, at, at the beginning we were having weekly meetings, but we haven't had a meeting for about four weeks now. So things have gone a little bit off the boil and now we're in the second wave. I'm not quite sure exactly what we will do with the information that we've captured. Um, but we need to have a look at the, the report and the findings in a bit more detail and think about what we can stop, restart and amplify. And there are some things that were, will naturally um, happen. So, for example, um, off the back of our learning from COVID, uh, we now are looking at introducing a, um, I can't remember what it's called, a flexible work, a, a type of flexible working policy. To, so that's been revisited. Um, we're also sharing learning across the organisation and the ICS. So we're looking at using some of the existing platforms to kind of share the output from the report. We want to look at publishing the learning in the literature. It, we, we did this at quite fast pace, so over about three weeks we captured the 50 interviews. Um, so we're not sure that it was um, necessarily a very rigorous piece of research, but I think in terms of a service evaluation and capturing the learning, it will be worth sharing in, in a journal if possible. Um, but use continuous improvement approach to develop projects further. So any ideas that we think could be amplified across the organisation, uh, continuous improvement will take those forward. Uh, we need to review the findings from the pre-mortem event and feed those into our report. Um, and then finally, we'll, all of this work will be fed into trust strategies and the planning framework. So the lead for the planning framework was actually a member of our group so that we could make sure that that the learning was aligned to like the wider strategic um, ambitions for the organisation. Um, and I think that's it. Is that right, Alison? Yeah, thank you. So any questions for me or shall we take them later? Tracy, that's that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just mm -hmm. conscious of time because I know we mm -hmm. want to get some time in breakout. So what we might do is move straight on to our next speaker. And those of those of you who are lucky enough to end up with Tracy in your group will have a chance to quiz her a little bit more. And um, and failing that, I'm sure you'd be happy for people to contact you, Tracy, if they had Absolutely. individual questions or quizzes.